thank you so much for both being here. Thank you for your, your performance, Candice, and thank you for your words and your, your illustrations, Cosby, and welcome. Thank you, hello. Thank you. Hi, Cosby. Hi. Hi there, so, so great to, to see, see you. you. Yeah, and so um, great to just um, bear witness to your oh, reading. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really, really, really beautiful reading. And I love, um, you know, because I had a, a particular kind of melody in my head, you know, regarding those words and, you know, in italics. And, and I was just like so um, just pleasantly and um, warmly surprised by your rendition. So I'd love to hear a little bit about oh. it. Well, I'm so glad. Uh, I absolutely love this book. I connect to it on so many levels. Uh, the child in me can relate so much. So my hair is like an homage to Mackenzie today. Um, and I, I'm just swept away by what you created. And um, the song that I sang for you all is a song from 1979 from an album mm. called Secret Life of Plants. And oh, it's, wow. it's a, yes, really? it's a, a Stevie Wonder it's a Stevie song. Stevie Wonder song. <laughs> it's a Stevie Wonder song from uh, an album of his that's not as commercially known, but has been hugely inspiring to me. And I actually, um, when I recorded my new single, um, Zora's Moon, and the whole album that I've been working on um, that's coming out this year, I was listening to Secret Life of Plants a lot. And there's one song called um, Come Back as a Flower that uh, mm. he wrote for his wife at the time, Sarita, who was also his writing partner and his, you know, the love, one of the loves of his life, uh, had a beautiful, soulful voice and she performed it on the album. And I, I've always, I once, I once met Stevie Wonder and I couldn't resist. I actually sang the melody in, and, oh, and wow. he, he just said, Sarita. And, uh, I, I was so, I blushed cause it was just a impulsive thing that happened. And, uh, so I have a very special, special connection to that song. So. The fact that uh, my hair is a garden, it really resonates with me and reminds me of so many um, musical images that I, I kind of uh, draw into my own music. Do you know that song, Come Back as a Flower? That's amazing. So, you know, I remember um, uh, because back then I, I didn't buy albums. You know, it was my brother who used his allowance to, um, you know, to buy the albums. And then so there was a lot of uh, Stevie mm. Wonder and Carlos mm. Santana. And um, I remember that album because there were certain songs that I, I didn't quite understand right. in a way. Um, because I think of uh, Stevie Wonder as I would. Um, like a literary equivalent would be like a Zadie yes. Smith, you know, I consider her to be a writer's yes. writer. Um, so I, I consider Stevie and that's why probably that album was not as commercially successful because it really was um, a musician's album. And I feel I think, like that album you know? is giving me a deep Toni Morrison vibe because yeah. it's basically yeah. embedded with magic, which yeah. is also, yeah. you know, something that I find inherent in this book is it's de definitely yeah. uh conveys so much so much magic and um yeah just possibility and so i think that yeah. he was talking about um metaphysical things and existential yeah. questions about life yeah. and so come yeah. back as a flower um the you know yeah. in that the singer is just saying that uh on that morning when she starts singing and breaks into song, she just wishes she could come back as a flower and feel the sweetness of yeah. life that way. And so I can't wait to go back and rediscover it. I again, heard Stevie you know? Wonder a lot yeah, from my mother with adult. My hearing. mother used to sing a Stevie mm -hmm. Wonder to wake us up in the morning. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yes. And play it. Amazing. Yes, and blast it. And so I do oh. that now with my own. Um, but Stevie Wonder is a huge uh, inspiration for me, so. 
We have very lucky, very lucky Beautiful. children. <laughs> a wonderful way to I be woken up say. in the morning. <laughs> Especially with your voice. When Thank I sing, you. my son tells me to stop the music. So. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> he obviously has a good ear. <laughs> it's not wrong. Um, it's, it's really lovely the way that you're talking about the kind of interweaving of words and music because I think you are both artists who really kind of cross those bridges a lot. I was reading, Cosby, that you, um, you've you written and, and painted to um, to music, kind of being inspired by music from Jazz at Lincoln Centre. And, mm -hmm. and I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about that kind of relationship between words and music for you. Yeah. Um... You know, it's um, for me. It's not just the music per se, but um, you know, that something that's being transmitted, really. You know, um, that I have no words or a feeling mm. for um, that shows up, and it's a gift to me. Mm. You know, um, oftentimes when I'm um, sort of like needing to pierce through or have a breakthrough, you know, I might be applying myself in a very disciplined way, but the door is still not opening. You know, and um, and I need that breakthrough. Um, oftentimes, I'll draw on Nina Simone, and there's something about her spirit, and um, something other than simply the musicality. It's um, sort of an otherworldliness and intention um, that I feel that she transmits, and and I'm sort of on the receiving end of it, and I can always have a breakthrough. You know, um, you know sort of after kind of receiving from her really, you know. Um, so there is something in art um, that um, has nothing to do only with uh, its perfection and its craft, you know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, so if you're making baskets, you know, it's like you're repeating the same thing over and over again and you come to the perfect basket and then you sort of like repeat that. Um, with art, it's a, little, it's a little different than craft, I think, although there is craft in art. Um, and it's something else, you know, um, and oftentimes we don't find the words to describe what that is, but we recognize it when we encounter it. Mm. I think that's such a profound kind of um, point to make about how it's almost the journey rather than the, the mm -hmm. kind of finished article when you're talking about art and mm -hmm. how it moves you. And, and, you know, one reason that we wanted to do this story time and, and feature your book specifically was because it feels like it opens a door to an experience that you know not everyone has and and how mm -hmm. and so I wondered Candice you, if you could you I know this book is really personal to you if you could just talk a little bit about your kind of like relationship with it and how it speaks to you personally well uh I I do identify closely with this character and also having a young daughter uh, a black girl of my own now I, I feel like the custodian to her hair journey in a lot of ways. And I am so grateful. I think that, you know, one of the um, themes in my music that I often end up speaking about and it's really undeniably present is ancestral wisdom and intergenerational sharing. It just, it's something that is like a, um, a North Star for me in the flux of being a, you know, touring and traveling musician and um, just, you know, I guess the, the contemporary context of being, of, of, you know, moving from place to place and the pace of digital life, I feel like the ancestral connection and those relationships and the memories that came out of them are what anchor me. And so that's why when I see that in this book, it just really resonates with how I learned about my own hair um, through my mother, my grandmother, and the women in my family and the images that were around my home. I think one of the beautiful things about Cosby's book is that we can bring it home. Unlike, you know, I was taken to museums and I saw some, some visual art, but to be able to have a piece like this in your own home is very intimate. Um, and I also think of my own music in that way. Uh, I like my music to be for the cookout, for leisure, for uh, a long drive or a basement party. I like those intimate black spaces, especially inspire me, the, those spaces in my childhood. And 
I definitely say like a primary intimate space, a black space of my childhood was between my mother or my grandmother's legs having my hair braided and, and being mm -hmm. caressed in that way and embraced in that way. And also uh, always being uh, a child in my class with uh, hair different from everyone else in a lot of predominantly white uh, environments where there's a, another student like uh, Jose, I think his name is Jose. Julio. Or, Julio? Yeah. I just remember the J. <laughs> like Julio. <laughs> and, you know, saying something, uh, not knowing how much it may affect the other child. Mm -hmm. And uh, that we all know type of chorus and, ref you know, that, that, that gaze, uh, I I know about that as a child too. So, I I, I always, as a musician, create songs uh, that are meant to reach a child like myself to give her something, a black girl, a black boy, give them something that I wish I had when I was in their place. Thank you so much. That's it. That's yeah, it's such a, a kind of beautiful sentiment and so important, you know, and, and you mentioned the word, I think, door earlier on, Cosby, and and for me as a, a white woman who didn't have that experience, this book really is that. It's a door, it's a window into an experience that I didn't personally have. And as you were saying, you know, the, the kind of sentiment that's channeled and imparted through, through art is a way to learn and kind of, and feel what that experience is in a way that's um, moving and and probably more informative than someone explaining it. You know, it's the, the personal mm -hmm. and kind of that mesh between the personal and the political and the intimate and the, the kind of the mm -hmm. um, external. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that you, you told me that you were inspired to write it because people kept talk, asking you for advice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for, for, for hair tips. Um... You know, and, and then oftentimes, like, you know, I'll, I'll share the book uh, with groups um, that may have very few, few, like, black children in the classroom. And, you know, the black children are sitting very attentively. It's like there's something uh, that is connecting with them. And, and whereas, you know, the, the others may sort of, like, sort of be a little bit in wonder and, you know, there's some questioning. And so oftentimes I'll give them a little bit of context, you know, and I'll share with them, like, uh, what a co-worker of mine years ago shared with me and that is that she wanted nothing more than to live with her grandmother who lived in the south and you know she was up in the northeast and her mom said as as um as soon as you learn to do your own hair you can go and stay with you know with nona and um and she till this day she was like a grown woman um and in recounting this story she was still in tears um, because she did not learn, she felt that she had not learned to do her hair in time, um, you know, because wow. there is some learning that has to happen. Um, and um, in, in order to, to get her, here, her hair to yield, um, and it was a process, you know, for her. And her, her grandmother passed away, and that's all that she wanted to do was to live with her grandmother. You know, um, so so in some cultures, you know, hair is not a big thing. It's you know, you so like you wash and you go and you you know, and others, it's like there's some learning, um, some cultivating, um, you know, uh, things that get passed on from generations that are just sort of understood, and you know, um, all of the various distinctions. And in the absence of that, you know, oftentimes um, there is a little bit of suffering, you know. Um, so um, people would always ask me for hair tips and, you know, my husband thought it was just so odd, you know, when we were dating because I'd get stopped on the street continually <laughs> and he thought, oh my God, I've just never seen anything like this before. And, you know, sometimes women would pull out like a little notepad or something, you know, from their pocketbook, you know, and start taking notes, you know, as I was like, you know, um, recounting like some of the herbs that would be helpful. Um, and like the train doors would shut and they would still, you know, what was that, Rosemary? You know, um, but one, one woman in particular struck me um, because she did have a, um, an adopted daughter 
and um, and she didn't know what to do with her daughter's hair, and it was like always like tangled and a bit linty, and so she asked me. Uh, for some tips and I mentioned the distinction of oil and I could see her like visibly recoil because um, she just couldn't go down the oil aisle because uh, with her shopping cart because oil is something you remove from the hair it's a bother you know um, and so um, I could see her like very quickly you know shutting so down see, you know just a dismissal yeah mm -hmm. shut down you know and so I, I thought of that little girl. Um, I won't call out her name, but I still remember her name. You know, she's like three years old. And I said, you know, if she should try to find some answers for herself, and she will be searching, you know, eventually, I wanted it to be written down, right? Because that's oftentimes how we get information that um, is not transmitted at the kitchen table or, you know, um, if we don't come from, example, uh, traditions of business, you know, it's like, how do we learn? We pick up a book. And I thought that, you know what, I would love it if there was a book that she could pick up to just start her on her way in her journey. Yeah, the, the section at the end that, that is kind of, um, which we didn't read out, obviously, but there's a section on hair care and step-by-step and -step instructions and guidance. And I really love how you've included that as a kind of you know, a tool, a learning tool. Again, it's just kind of, mm -hmm. it's showing how, how kind of integral art is to learning and, and kind of, they are one and the same thing, you know, then for me, they're not separate, you know, what art is about kind of exploration and learning and progress. And that's why art is so powerful. Um, and that can be in the poetry of it, but it also can be in just, you know, the space that you created in engaging someone and kind of, and then putting this information in there. And I personally appreciate the, the guidance as well, which is also, you know, <laughs> it's also useful. And um, I actually, there was, I just wanted to, um, with that kind of thought of, you know, the, the, um, when you're saying about reading it to a class and you know there's kind of there's black children there's there's white children there's you know children of other races and and the there's a line that i feel like is perhaps kind of a message to there's a the book is mainly focused obviously on the experience of Mackenzie and, and little girls and boys who maybe kind of share that experience but then um you also write my words are like seeds that i plant what i think and speak draws a yield and i feel like that's a very I don't know if this is I'm reading into this, but to me that kind of speaks to everyone. It's it's a it's a reminder that what you say, what Julio said, has an impact, and you know that kind of yield can be positive or it can be negative, and it's a choice how to kind of engage with the world and difference and you know all these kind of things. So I'm just wondering if that's I don't know if I'm reading that correctly or <laughs> what that kind of means to you. Uh, Candace, I, I I hear you sort of like ready to. To speak, I, I want to sort of defer to, you know, what's present for you now. Oh, I was just going to say that I feel it's mm -hmm. like a twin. My song, Zora's Moon, is kind of like a twin flame to My Hair is a Garden in that sense, where I mm -hmm. feel like our narratives, we want to, well, I feel like they're both, your my song and your book are like, uh, like narrative um, monuments to uh, mm -hmm. a, a legacy and culture and, and practices. I think that part of what the power of, of making a book like this or a song is that you m memorialize forever something that can kind of be often brushed aside. And that classroom environment mm -hmm. reminds me so much of, of that lesson, which I think is very important for all children, is that this is a topic that is it's not. It's no accident that it's hard to find this information out. There's a history behind that, and that's why we shine a light on these stories, and they're all the more powerful for, um, you know, making art not only for the pleasure of of taking it in, but also to kind of bear witness to an experience that's been historically uh, silenced. Um, and with Zora's Moon, I wanted I use a sample of the writer Zora Neale Hurston, who many people are not familiar with, uh, which sort of surprised me when I put the song out. I guess in the same way that Cosby's saying that it it kind of caught 
her and her husband off guard how frequently people were, you know, engaging in this conversation. Well, I, I, I think that there's some writers and sort of artists that have been really formative to me, and I'm always surprised that people are not that familiar. So Zora mm -hmm. Neale Hurston is one of the most important writers, uh, I think, ever, and she's a black woman writer who was most prolific in the 20s and 30s and an anthropologist. She studied many things, but at the center of it was black life and culture, folkways. Mm -hmm. And I once in my research found this sample of her talking about being a little girl and feeling like the moon was following her everywhere she ran at mm -hmm. night. And it was her cousins, a, a chorus of her cousins who disillusioned her and told her that the moon follows everyone. But she had this inherent belief that she was special. And she says that in, I, I put the sample right at the beginning. And it's not just because I love Zora Neale Hurston, but also because I found there's a power when we're able to tell our own stories in our own voice. And like, I think that as much as there are many things I could have done with my life, I am a singer and a vocalist and a songwriter because I think making my own narratives and documenting them, recording them is my purpose. And it's a purpose that's meant to expand this conversation, not only for black girls and boys, but for all families, all children. So we can think, of, you know, think differently. Um, we need to, we need to have a, like a fulsome historical record. Uh, so I think I, I see the two things in this, you know, close relationship, the book and the song. I think that's why it comes to mind for me, especially even I used to believe, did you ever, I don't know if Cosby, I don't know if I asked you that already. Did you ever think that the moon was following you or? <laughs> See, I did. and I did. some people I don't, did. but, and for a black girl, <laughs> you know, I just found that, and she got on national radio in 1943 in a segregated country and tells this very mm -hmm. subtle anecdote about empowerment. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same yeah. sort of core, curiosity and self-discovery that I yeah. see in Mackenzie and I see in Cosby and myself too as artists who are reaching for something with a foot in legacy mm -hmm. but reaching for uh for a, a clear a clear broader space to tell our stories and um yeah I used to think that too and I I that's those are the things those are the um the historical moments and archival bits that are at the center of a lot of my songs. Wow. And there's a little bit of magic to it too. You know, I, I remember my daughter was like maybe a year and a half and, um, you know, we could be driving and she would, you know, sort of like cry out, cry out and then point, right. you know. And then I, I would say, oh, like no matter, no matter what day or what time of the evening, she always seemed to find the moon. It's like that was like a very important distinction for mm -hmm. her, you know. So yeah, so just a little hint of magic in and there. timelessness. To, um, just even, yeah, and to to so like to own it, you know, to be aware enough to, you know, to want to to own that experience. Yes, and even the know, even the connection. notion of something following us mm -hmm. in a society where. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think, I think it's about um, being self-possessed and having a sense of your your terrain and a, and a mm -hmm. profound possibility, as is a garden, yeah. as is mm -hmm. running into the night as a child, a girl child, yeah. unescorted, free, and mm -hmm. believing the moon is you have lassoed the moon yourself and so once i heard her tell that story it became uh the magic carpet for the rest of the writing and everything yeah. i wrote everything after that and um it's so gratifying i can't wait for you to hear the song because it's it's gratifying oh, for me to, to know that it. you actually also thought 
the moon. Frida, <laughs> did you ever think the moon was following you? You don't, yeah, have to, you don't have to say so. Did you really? Yeah, no. Um, but I used to I used to watch it from car journeys, and I was kind of right. amazed that it kept pace with us. And I was like, it's still here. <laughs> there is some, I guess, you know, I think in, in your song, in that sample, and she talks about how you're the center of the world, you know, there's come something mm-hmm. so incredibly special and magical about being the center of the world and and mm-hmm. safe as well, you know, while you're the center of the world. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, mm-hmm. as we know, as we grow older, that fractures a little and we start to understand that not only are we not the center of the world, but maybe the world sees us in a way that we don't see ourselves. And that kind of journey, you know, th- there's the magic on one hand of that kind of like certainty, but then the um, the kind of pathos of, of the journey outside of that. and. And so, as you were saying, the importance of kind of like art really, ha- you know, no voices being silenced and there being space to kind of shine light on everything and have all those voices centered, essentially. And in, and, the, bre- you know. in the breath of all of that, you can encompass the, the struggle and you can encompass the discovery and the self-definition and the joy and the sweetness. I mean, mm-hmm. what is a garden if not full of nourishment and sweetness? And so, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, and and that's that's what makes me sort of like curious about you know who were those figures in your life that um, that saw to the nourishment and the feeding and the and the watering of your soul. What a gorgeous question! I so the sorrel. I get. I'm so thirsty right now because of this delicious book. Um, I my family comes from Jamaica. And uh, oh, wow. I'm first generation American, and sorrow oh, wow. only me as well. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> she sent a code <laughs> in the sorrow. But, but my my no, but my my family hails from Honduras, Central oh, America. So but, so sorrow. Yeah, but did you do sorrow? I'm sorry. So, so oddly enough, we didn't do sorrel. And it's so interesting because I have friends of mine who says, well, what do you know about sorrel? You know, because it, as far as they're concerned, it's there. You know? I know where you're going um, with this. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. You, you, you reside in Brooklyn, right? So I, um, I've been uh, living and I was born and raised and um, did most of my adult life in Brooklyn up until three years ago. And so now I'm in Evanston, Illinois, oh, which is sort of a pebble's throw from, you know, um, from Chicago, you know, home to North. But I can imagine, I, yeah. I only say that to say, uh, besides that, yeah. I, as, mar- as in we're, we're in a larger in the- artist circle and that's how we know it, we, we yeah. know, know each other and I you were definitely could run to someone's house like Mackenzie and be offered a cup, right? Of sorrow. <laughs> it's a very, yes, very for sure. Like, With a hint of clove yes. and ginger. So that's what they were cooking up. Uh, that's that was what the house smelled like at the holidays. So, oh, and wow. even I was yeah. telling, uh, I was just saying a, li- a bit earlier that this this blouse that I'm wearing is something my grandmother sewed. Um, that I chose to wear as a, this is the type of thing that I do. I, as you were talking about your process and listening to Nina Simone, which I also, Mm -hmm. of course, is part of my, you know, daily, one of my daily rituals. Um, so I, we share that is, is sometimes picking something that's handmade or passed down as I'm writing or creating Mm -hmm. something like this, uh, this gathering that we're creating right now with everyone in the room. Yeah. And I like to touch that and feel that tactile connection. Mm -hmm. Um, But Mm -hmm. my grandmothers were very brave. Uh, They were very resourceful and they poured into our whole family. And they're so alive Mm -hmm. for me. I do have my, my grandmother who, and thank you for bringing her up because my grandmother who taught me how to comb my hair uh, condition it and all those good things is alive still. She's vaccinated. Oh, wow. She's 97. <laughs> yes. And wow. God bless so her. Yeah. I, uh, I'll call her, at, you know, after we, we come off for sure. Um, so it's, it's something that, that we keep alive. And I think, uh, your book holds so many memories, like a family album, even though 
you know, it's for every family. It's for, for every me. family in different mm. ways, mm. which is, you know, right. a beautiful thing about it. It's, a, it's either a portal or it's your family album or it's, you know, it's a door. And That's true. Yeah. And we say windows or yeah. mirrors. Yes. But we, we find ourselves. And, um, and it, I think, you know, it's, it's so amazing that people can tend to their, their own detail, you know, um, and then share it, you know, because it, it's sort of like, you know, people in their own element, if there's just something... Um, mystical and um, vibrant and amazing. You know, I look at a, an Indian woman, an East Indian woman in her sari, and it's, you know, well, how did, you know, she come to, you know, this vivid color and these textures and, you know, materials and how she ties it. And it's not something that I would necessarily be able to do for myself, but like seeing her in her element, you know, I can wonder and um, and be even amazed and something in me, it's sort of lit and, um, you know, even though I'm looking at her through a window. Yeah, you know. it's absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. Um, it's really, and it's a gift that each person who decides to open up that personal experience shares with mm -hmm. other people, you know, that's like you, your music, yeah. Candice, and your stories and your illustrations, you know, they are, they are gifts for us to kind of know you better and to know the world better and for our children to do the same. And so, you know, infinitely mm -hmm. grateful for you sharing them with us and, and being here to talk about them today. Thank you. And we're actually, we have um, a, a recording of you performing Zora's Moon. So we're going to listen to that now. And I just want to say thank you again. And um, I believe that there will be a link to the book if you're watching and you're interested in buying it, which we encourage you to do because it's a, it's a wonderful story for all it's ages. A masterpiece. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Had Guggenheim Fellowship. This song is been elected to so important to me. Anthropological Fellowships and what's that other one? Ethnological. Ethnological Fellowship. Yeah, it's folklore. It's yes, and she's here. going around the country collecting uh, uh, folklore and doing a beautiful job. But all that will come out, I think, as we talk along. I, I, I was amused at so many of the stories in Dust Tracks on the Road. There was one thing you said about children that I love. Isn't it true that when we're little, we just think the world revolves around us? Yeah. Things are going to happen to other people. Bad things. They aren't going to happen to us. No, sir. And, and that thing you said about the moon. Well, that, uh, if you go outdoors tonight and the moon is up, you have to take the moon is there right now. But anyhow, if the moon is, is shining, you go out and you run and it'll follow you. Mm -hmm. 